they have a reference going to the line. Now let's go back to this one. So when Jacob was about to die, he said, you know, their, their, their inheritance before us, after, after that and everything will be a spoken blessing. So remember this, if I told you, give to your father or your mother. We could do this because we could do this for kids. And kids, do not stress out your parents, or they might say something else to you. <laughs> so before he died, he said, Dad, we'll be attacked by a band of raiders, but we will attack them at their heel. And then next verse, when he started prophesying to Dan, he said, Dan will provide justice for his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan will be a snake. You know, if I'm dying and I need to prophesy to my kids, I think I'm going to say he's a snake. You know? By a road, oh, by a roadside. Can you do that? <coughs> a viper on the path that bites the horse's heel so that the rider so the rider not look backwards. Let's connect this together. I'm talking about the line of Judah is the line of prophecy and revelation. Let me tell you this. If you do not know the future, you are scared of the future. All right? If you do not know what tomorrow will bring, your plans for tomorrow will be fraught with trepidation and a lot of confusion. Did you know that God has no plan B, C, D, or E? It's just one. Because his confidence and his word will work. Now, what, what the message here is this, that if you are part of if you are with the, you are with God, and you know that the line of Judah is with you, you know that you know that the word of God will work for you. You don't have to enter the next year with fear and trepidation. Because I read the cross, it says that will be awesome. It says that our president next year will be different. There's a political thing over there. But what I'm trying to say is, the future in God is beautiful, but if you're not sure. People will refuse to move on, and if they are forced to move on, whatever action they were going to be doing will be filled with a lot of trepidation, a lot of pushback. Did you know that if you plan for very you will not be able to accomplish what you are supposed to accomplish? Are you doing that? Let me just give you a, 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 a quick story here. Uh, during the Vietnam War, whenever they wanted to attack an enemy, they have a lot of as they're building that, the, the North Vietnamese are okay, but because they, they're about to do something, and so they get attacked. So the whole thing, the preparation and everything, the, the planning, it, it became it became an information, a pandemic became an information to the enemy. One day, they said, there's a really bad general in the North, in, 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 uh, in uh, North Vietnam that they need to get rid of. So the plan was to try to send bombers there, bomb the whole mountain, and kill the people, and send like thousands of soldiers, and, and then more Americans will die. Can we come up with something less, you know, deadly for us? They came up with a sniper guy by the name of uh, Askar. So this guy, he went in by himself, without a spotter, just a gun, and went there and hunted the general with no bulletproof or anything, and beat the child. You know why? Because he's so sure he can do this. But thousands of soldiers were put in the base, aircraft will not, will not be flying, he said, I'll do this. I am so confident I'm going to do anything. That guy is dead. The bad general was dead. You know, because of confidence. But when we plan with fear and trepidation, we put so many pads in it, we look like a giant elephant and we cannot maneuver around our problem. And the giant of the time of Judah is saying, Jesus, I will prophesy, I have declared things to you. It's going to be awesome, it's going to be beautiful because of the revelation of God that God is in you. When we were at the Bronx Zoo, I thought it was a rock. It was a big one. And I thought it was a mess wagon. It's so big and so huge. And when you look at the lion, he looks very intimidating. It's just like, oh, you can do that. No, 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 the Pharaoh said to him, because remember, his son Joseph became the vice president of Egypt, remember that? So when they moved over from the famine of Israel, of Canaan land to Egypt, 
the Pharaoh, of course, met them and said, hey, so you are the father of Joseph. So how are you doing? And this is what he said. My life has been short and hard. If your life is short and hard, what have you to say for your kids? Nothing. You saw me to the fourth. In fact, it's fourth born son. Uh, he actually is related to fourth born son. He says, You're supposed to be my strength. You're supposed to be the my reflection of my, 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 my manhood, my, my, my being a leader. But, but this is what you are. You know what? You're not going to succeed. He started saying things that are the right, and then he started using Levi's. And yes, you are hot tempered. You know, and all of this. And I'm saying, How is it that your last day is that when you do a lecture with your kids? Did you be doing uh, that the moment that you something last bad, night. right? Uh -huh. So he kept this to himself, and so he said, for then he said, uh, there is for, uh, really to wait to for God he said, you will be attacked by So let's say, you will be attacked by Raiders. Taylor was your wife. But you were attacked by Raiders. And then the next word, for then he said, you will be a snake. You will be a snake by the roadside. And, yes. and also, this is, this is so sad. This, look, at this, look at this conclusion in Genesis 49, verse 18. All these were the, were the top kinds of Israel. This is what their father said to them as he blessed them. That really sounds like a blessing. Blessing each with the blessing suitable to. Blessing them suitable to him, to him, the father. This is how I feel like we should, what we should have. It's like my father saying, you know, you, you, you were behaving the whole time. This is what you're getting a call for this. Kasi mo tinatang ulo mo sa pasko, pag tinatang mo regalo mo, bato. Opo mo sa ulo mo. Look, in conclusion, he said, this is the blessing I can give you because this is what I think you deserve because the whole time I was your father, you were this and that. You'll be a snake, you'll be a fan, and you, you're like this. Now, very interesting, he has a years after. Let's go to Moses came and became the father also of Israel. This time the twelve, of course, have grown bigger and like millions already. By virtue of him being a leader, he became a father. And now Moses time to die. So Jacob, when he was about to die, he called his kids and said a blessing. This time it's Moses time to die, also as Mount Nebo. And before he was going to go pass away, he called the tribes again together. Three hundred years after, and this is what he said. Remember, God will become will be a part. And he started blessing. Now, why is this? Because Moses, the Bible says, with God, God can talk to Moses like a friend. See, if you talk to God face to face, if you hear from God always, you know what you're going to hear? Good day. I, I, I was reading a, a book about this lady who, who met, who met, who had a revelation about Jesus, who actually Jesus talked to him. And then they, they one time came to a church. It's very interesting. In a vision, they came to a church. And in the church, half the people were asleep. At least one point in the church. How would you want to so be? So and then he said to Jesus, Look, look Jesus, yes. You know, that's the human heart. And you know what? Jesus said, It's okay. We're here. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? You can never call Jesus to be negative. What I'm trying to say is, whenever you are in the presence of God, there is nothing negative. So, if you've been praying and you came out, you're angry, and I don't think you were having a good time with God. Whenever, that's a wonderful expression, a joyful Because most of the time when we see an intercessor, we have this crumpled thing. Please don't settle for me. You know, I have been frustrated. A joyful successor because actually you're brought into the presence of God. There is much joy, there is this prophecy, this revelation. And Moses lived a life like that. And look at this 300 years after, Jacob said, My life is short and hard. And all he heard was problems. And he was just a cheater, by the way. He cheats a lot of people. And so his life was hard in the desert. He only had sparse encounters with God. He seldom goes to church. Unless you. But Moses goes to church the whole time. He has his church in his, his church meeting behind him. And before he died, this is what he said. 
And of God, he said, remember the word God is fortune, blessing. Blessed he be, blessed be he who enlarges God. God conscious like a lion. There's the word not lion. He says, off arm and top. He chooses the best of the land for himself, for the for their commanded fortune was to serve. And he came with the head of the people, with Israel, he executed the justice of the Lord and his judgment for Israel. His father, with the living of God, said, you will be a part. And Moses made a more revelation because he encountered God face to face. And remember, the prophecy and revelation is the line of Judah, and this is what he got. So he's saying, listen, I know of what the Father said. I cannot counteract that. I cannot reverse it. But I can bless God. Bless it on The prophecy 300 years ago, somebody will come and attack you. And the prophecy after that, we both say, but I'm sending people to bless you. Can you see? Why? People will come and attack you, but I will send people who will bless you, who will enlarge your tent, who will make you bigger. In fact, in, in the book of Jacob, for Jacob, he said he was just attacking the hills. He was just attacking the hills. What does that mean? When you attack at the hill, killing your enemy for they know his way out. Whatever you're doing, you're not even caught in a distraction at all. But God is saying, with most of them, you know what's interesting? If you read the whole Genesis 49 way, when Jacob was prophesying and king, he really mentioned God. Really. Because the whole time he prophecy was on his heart, and he was a bigger man. But regardless, look at this. Even though he prophesied in bitterness, they all were things in his place. That's why a father or mother, anybody in the world here, watch the man. You have to release anything to the Because you have to go to this mountain. He was so pissed off with his kids, he was not even around. But Moses, remember, he was also pissed off with his Israelites. But he always looked into the presence of God. So before he died, he was after. He's saying, look at you now. You're going to be a lion. Yes, they will come and attack you, but I'm sending people. The people are coming to attack you, but more people will come to bless you. In fact, after this blessing, you become a leader. You will rule a certain day, and you will rule, and you will judge. And then the next one for Dan. Jacob said, you are a snake. Look at Moses said at the end of the year. These pictures are important to me. Did you see what revelation can do? What I'm trying to say is this. This year is coming. And it's coming yes. fast. Some of us are stuck in a rut. Yes. And you cannot get out of the middle of the climbing orbit. And going around. And going around. And going around. You cannot escape it. Look at what uh, Deuteronomy 30 was going to say. Jacob concluded, he said, this is why I feel that you should have. Moses, in the Bible, said, this is the completion. Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people say, by the Lord, the shield of your help and the sword of your triumph. Your enemy shall come falling for you, but you shall set upon your back. What a contrast. In the other, in the other verses of the day, this is how I feel you should get. On the other one, says, by the grace of God, this is what you get. Because of our revelation, well, did you know that prophecy changes the direction of your life? If you don't have prophecy, if you don't have a revelation of God, you will walk the same walk. Do you feel like you feel like you're just? Um, I remember when uh, in in uh, in the Philippines, whenever it rains, the uh, asphalt comes off, and the the car will come in going on the same on the same uh, rut. And so instead of being flat, it became hollow. And whether you want to turn left or right, your, your car is flat. You just keep moving in the same route. But the prophecy, a revelation from the line of Judah, will cause you to get out of that route. Suddenly the destiny, remember the word God means blessing? Uh, Leah, when, when the child came out, she said, this will be a blessing for us. We... Coupled with the revelation and the prophecy, the destiny is not in your life to trust Regardless of what others said about you, Jacob said, you know what, you could you must you are a blessing, but I look at the The mother said you're blessing, the father said you're saying. But then another father came out and said, you know, because